So thanks for being here first uh, in Bordeaux. So we are the local here. Uh, so I'm going to present you our solution uh, to simulate hardware electronics on a distributed architecture. So the talk is entitled One Simulator to Rule Them All and on a Distributed Infrastructure to Infrastructure Run Them. So there is a reference to Star Wars, as you see. So, oh, great. So the idea of what we are doing in Hiventive is to bring people from their electronics product ID uh, directly to, to the first steps of the fabrication, so the small series, small pre-series. Uh, so for this, we use, uh, we use virtual platforms, so uh, uh, hardware simulation, uh, and then we accompany them until the fabrication. So we are a young company. Uh, our product is not out yet. So, well, you kn you'll understand why when I do the demo. Uh, so, uh, first I talk about what is uh, hardware simulation today. Uh, then I present our solution. And finally, uh, we have a demo, but maybe after lunch, because uh, I think I can't show it on my computer. So uh, first today, uh, there are a lot of solutions for uh, hardware simulation. So the first one, QMU, which is uh, a simulator I love to use as, as much as I hate to develop on it. Uh, so the advantage is that there are many models, uh, CPUs, uh, many users, it's very performant, uh, models are high quality. But the problem is that it's a big block, big monolithic block. Uh, there is not much developer documentation, and you never really know if you are emulating things or virtualizing. virtualizing. So for the accuracy, you're not always sure. Then there is System C, which is not a simulator, but a, a normalization. Uh, so what's good with it, it's, it's a strong normalization uh, from the from system C and TLM2 uh, and an object language which is easier to represent models uh, but uh, the libraries of models are very fragmented we never know if a model has already been developed if we could use it uh, and it's mono thread so it's not really performant if you have huge simulations then there are many others like gem5 which has very accurate CPU simulation uh, compared to QMU, but of course it's slower in this case. So what is the solution? A new simulator? No, we have enough. Uh, we just have to take what's the best uh, from where it is. So uh, what we're doing uh, in our simulation is uh, instantiating uh, several simulations, so they are all orchestrated by what we call SimGuru, uh, and uh, all these simulators are uh, are wrapped in a Sim Disciple, so which is a common low-level API manager. Um, uh, so there is a middleware to make the communication with the with the simulator. Um, uh, so. Here. Okay. Uh, so there are several features such as uh, tunable time synchronization. Sometimes you just want uh, high grain uh, functional simulation. Sometimes you want to be very accurate. Of course, it will impact the speed of simulation. Uh, uh, then there is the aggregation of all uh, so user inputs and uh, platform outputs. Uh, on a single uh, web-based front-end uh, and all logs are aggregated uh, and timed. Uh, and everything is just run from a single uh, platform configuration input, which is today a configuration file. So uh, the representation of models uh, in our representation is really classic. So you have models which uh, have sockets. These sockets are connected uh, between the models or they can be also exported 
uh, to make a, a bigger model we can, which, which can be used uh, in another simulation uh, as a new model. So, um, <coughs> to orchestrate everything, there is a generic API, uh, API with, um, uh, with several parts. So, first there is simulation control, so, which is used for time synchronization, uh, start, post, stop. Uh, then the most important part is the platform assembly. So we, ha we have course to uh, tell the simulator to add models, to identify sockets, uh, add connections, export settings. Uh, and then, of course, there are the transaction transactions. When one of the simulator must communicate with another one, uh, it sends messages to the guru, it transmits them to the right place. And then there is the simulation logs and uh, events. So the key steps in the usage, uh, well, in the, in the functionalities of uh, this guru. Uh, so first, uh, the guru reads the configuration. It detects all the simulators which are concerned by the simulation. Uh, then all models, sockets, settings are listed. Uh, then detection is made if sockets must be uh, connected inside the same, uh, in, say the same, same simulator or exported to be managed by the guru itself. Then for each disciple, um, so the guru uh, first may trigger code generation. Uh, for instance, in, in system C, we have to generate code uh, because we can't easily uh, connect and, uh, and create models dynamically because of uh, templated classes of TLM. Uh, the guru uh, then triggers uh, the compilation with the right parameters. So, uh, <coughs> yes. Uh, for instance, uh, if we use uh, a RISC-5 uh, RISC ar architecture, QMU will be compilated with the architecture RISC-5. Uh, and then uh, the guru runs uh, every disciple executable. Then for each disciple, uh, when it's run, it contacts the guru and gets a unique ID uh, and it just waits for the guru instructions uh, until the simulation is started. So, uh, the first communications, in the first communication, the guru assembles all disciples through the API calls or checks that the platform is already right assembled uh, if there is code generation. Uh, then uh, it sets the first time deadline for the synchronization and starts the simulations. So uh, when the simulation is, is run, so the transactions are uh, issued uh, leveraging forward payloads and backward payloads uh, which are depending on the protocol specifications. Uh, so the generic payload is simply a, a length and a, an array of bytes. Uh, so, how does uh, time synchronization work? Uh, so, uh, the, everything is controlled. It's the other microphone. Oh, thanks. Um, so, uh, the time is controlled this way. So, there is a sliding quantum. So, uh, when the, the, the simulation starts, the, the guru sets deadline to all disciples. Uh, so simulation starts, time advances. Uh, then uh, the, uh, when there is a transaction between uh, two disciples, so it goes through the guru and uh, the disciples uh, give to the guru the virtual time of their simulations. And uh, if there are actions to take, uh, the guru takes them. Here there are not. So here, the first disciple uh, um, reached uh, the deadline. Uh, so the guru uh, retriggers, uh, allows the first disciple to go for further in time. And so for this, the quantum is, uh, is just slided. Uh, so uh, the next step uh, won't uh, overflow this quantum. Okay. Uh, so uh, then later uh, there is another there is another transaction. So the guru knows the time of all the of both the disciples. 
So here it detects that uh, the second disciple is very near from his deadline. Uh, so as it is very near, he won't wait for the for the disciple to reach its deadline. It's going it's going to retrigger uh, its next ne its next deadline right now. Okay. Okay, and then, uh, then so time advances again, and uh, another uh, nearly met deadline is met. So, so the the window is sliding, etc., etc. So there are several advantages of doing that. First, uh, it is a model-centered uh, vision of things. Uh, from your guru, you only see. Uh, configuration files so all your models are, are described for with a with a common configuration uh, configuration syntax uh, so uh, so you don't even care about what simulator is used um, the simulation is totally distributed so uh, so the multi simulator instance uh, has a, uh, is useful to have a parallelism uh, and then uh, what's interesting too is legality because uh, you have no license contamination between the executables. It means that you can run your models uh, with QMU but without being uh, polluted by the, by the license of QMU which would, uh, which would uh, obligate you to use a GNU, uh, GNU license. Uh, then um, you can also use multiple CPU archi architectures in the same simulation. You can imagine ha having a Raspberry Pi communicating, communicating through UART or anything uh, with a RISC-V platform. Uh, but uh, the drawback with this is that simulation can be slower, of course, because uh, the inter-process communication uh, on, the, on the machine is uh, much slower than intra-process. So, so, so transaction can be can have a uh, can be like uh, five milliseconds long, depending on the context. Uh, uh, but uh, and of course, when you want more time accuracy, the simulation gets significantly slower as you have a lot of uh, of deadline met. So I wanted to mm, show a demo uh, of a Raspberry Pi uh, by three B plus, but uh, apparently. That will be later. Later. Okay. So, if you have any question. Um, thank you very much. I, I think it's a great aspiration to have. Can I just check the model of the quantum of time looks awfully similar to the System C TLM yes. model? Of, is is it the same model that you're using? Um, I don't know, actually. <laughs> okay. But it's, okay. Yes, it's quite similar, actually. Yes, but um, uh, but I mean, uh, it's a it's proper impl well, it's a, it's another implementation anyway. Okay. Uh, and but, uh, so, one of the questions that comes from from that is, how do you choose your quantum? Is that up to the user to select, or do you select it? Because if you have a big quantum, your simulation will go very fast. If you have a small quantum. But, but if you go very fast, you may risk something if significant events happen within the quantum. Um, so I wondered how you chose your quantum. So the quantum is passed into the configuration file, but uh, if we have to auto-determine it, uh, we take uh, something which is uh, quite near from the, from the smallest, well, from the highest frequency timer, uh, which triggers events in another uh, in another simulator. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And you can you can also deactivate the quantum if you have not any uh, time synchronization, uh, like like you'll see in the Nemo here. I only have passive. Uh, IPs uh, in system C, so I deactivate the, the 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 time trigger because it's just taking more time. Okay. So. Uh, okay. Okay. Wrong window. 
Cito. So, for instance, I'm just going to run um, Raspberry Pi and show you the configuration file. So you you only have um, well, you have a list of models uh, with a list of sockets uh, and settings and the list of connections at the end. So. Uh, uh, for instance, the core of QMU, the system memory, is connected to some address to the uh, memory map socket of uh, the first UART, etc., uh, etc. Et Same thing for the area area queues. So I just run it, and you'll see. Okay. So what's going to happen here is first. So QMU here is run first. First. So the, the disciple is compiled if it's not. Uh, we use a Conan package manager for a C and C++ um, uh, C and C++ uh, simulator, so which is the case for QMU and System C. So all dependencies uh, which are in the config, config file are retrieved automatically if they are not installed in the machine and compiled. And uh, everything is just run. So here. Uh, the, um, the system C part uh, had his, its code generated and then the code was compiled and run. So here uh, both are ready. The, the simulation is just waiting for the front end uh, to be connected. Sorry. So here we have a Debian 9, uh, Debian 9 distribution running on the Raspberry Pi. So in the config file, I, I added a, a button and a LED which are connecting to the GPIO. So the GPIO, the button, the LED, the UART are all in system C. Uh, the CPUs, uh, RAM memory, uh, SD card, uh, SD host, uh, and other models are all in QMU, and uh, also the also the interrupt controllers, because I tried I tried to put the interrupt controllers in uh, System C, but it was extremely slow because there are a lot of transactions between the CPUs and the interrupt controllers. Uh, so as you can see, the the Debian kernel is starting. Uh, takes a lot quite a lot of time. So if you have any question, any other question uh, while it's uh, starting. Yes? <laughs> I really just want to keep Frank fit, but they am. Um, um, <laughs> how, how well does this scale? Because you've got your guru, and it strikes me that with the need for the guru to control your time quantum, this probably is going to work quite well on an 8-core processor. I think if you started to put it on a 40-core Xeon, you might start to run into scaling problems. Have you, have you sort of seen how well it scales on highly parallel systems? You mean on the host or on the guest? Yeah, yeah where, what you're running your simulation on. Um, well, um, where do you see a scaling problem on this? So, the, 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 if the guru, the thread that's the guru has to keep a global view of time. Yes. Okay, and all the other threads which are are going to be having to talk to that one thread. So that yes. one thread has the danger of becoming a bottleneck. So if you get to a, a highly power and I wonder if you measured that, because that's a bit of a problem with all these yes, systems that's a, that have that's a global a problem, view of time. But the problem is that um, if you don't concentrate if you don't concentrate the time, the time, um, well, the the time control, the problem is that you can't ensure with 100% chance that uh, your deadline is not met. Maybe you can have a more distributed way to do this. 
a way to a way to improve the to improve the speed is also to make the simulators communicate their transactions uh, directly uh, the ones to the others instead of uh, communicated with the guru but then you won't have uh, transaction logs for instance yes yes You're going to want to run them on big computers, and that means you need to, I suggest you need to think ahead to, if you're going to run them on you know, one of the cloud supercomputer services, how does this work when I've got a big chip and I want to simulate it on a thousand cores? And I think you're going to have to have a look at a hierarchy yes, of, of course, gurus for, for with a hierarchy yes. of quanta. Of course. But then I guess if you, if you run the simulation on a lot of... Uh, with a lot of platforms communicating with them, I think you will have to relax the conditions uh, well, for the deadline to be a bit more released. And, uh, and then, yes, you can have a distributed time control. But then uh, it's always the same problem in simulation when you want time accuracy. Uh, of course, you, you always meet, uh, meet uh, how to say, um, uh, this kind of problems. So here I just run, run on the Debian 9 uh, a script which uh, s makes an export of uh, GPIO pins 9 and 10, so on the GPIO which are on system C. Uh, to, so the one on the button in input mode, the other in output mode, and then there is just a, a loop which is copying the state of the, of the, out, of the button on the let pin. And so, so you see, it just works. 